For a session produced by our underwriter, J.P. Morgan Chase, please welcome City of Miami Mayor Tomas Regalado, Detroit Mayor Mike Duggan, and Janice Bowdler, the Head of Community Development for Global Philanthropy at J.B. Morgan Chase. Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you. I'm so pleased to be here with two esteemed mayors. Thank you all for joining me for a conversation on what it means to build more inclusive cities. Uh, we're gathered here at a time when cities are making a real comeback all across the country. But you both know very well that the prosperity that is really burgeoning in downtowns in, uh, in Detroit, in Midtown, that success isn't always broadly shared across all of a city's neighborhoods. I'm very proud that we're working with both of you in, in both Detroit and Miami to make investments that are trying to do exactly this, draw some of the prosperity, some of the success in those flourishing downtowns out into the neighborhoods. New research is telling us that this work is more important than ever. As you know, as I'm sure all of you know, a zip code is still the biggest determinant of life outcomes for a child. That is a fact that we have to change. And investing in place where kids are, where they're growing up, is key to, to doing this. We're working with both of you on Pro Neighborhoods, a five-year, $125 million initiative to break down some of those barriers to economic mobility. So thank you for having this important conversation. Mayor Duggan, I'd love to start with you. You ran your campaign in Detroit on a slogan that every neighborhood has a future, which might not have been popular at the time and would have been easy to do something different given the success of downtown and midtown. Tell us what that meant for you and what your strategy has been to develop in the neighborhoods. Uh, well, what's, what's happening in Detroit is something I never thought I'd see in, in my lifetime. And I was born in Detroit, uh, but uh, the uh, trend that everybody here is experiencing around the world of young people moving into uh, urban chorus is happening in the city in an amazing way. It's a six-month wait to get an apartment anywhere in downtown and midtown Detroit, and we've got 5,000 housing units, either under construction or in design. Uh, we're completely out of office space. The first new office building was started last month in 15 years, and there's several more uh, on the books. Uh, but if you think about the rest of the city, we got a city that went from a million eight to 700,000 people over 50 years, the people in those neighborhoods who are left, they love what's happening in downtown and midtown, but they say, but what about us? We stayed here through all of those times. And so, uh, you know, it's been critical for us. We, um, the city actually owns 95,000 parcels of land in the neighborhoods. And so we are knocking down houses at an astonishing rate. When you knock down the burned out houses, we got lots of vacant houses in real good shape from the last housing crisis. Anybody who's interested in moving to the city, you can go to our uh, auction site, buildingdetroit.org. We auction three houses uh, every single day. Uh, they go from anywhere from $1,000 to, to $90,000. Beautiful houses. Uh, uh, they, they are. Uh, we, we, we've sued private owners of vacant houses, made them fix them up, uh, and now half the neighborhoods in the city have seen a 50% increase in their property values in the last two years. And so the people of Detroit are happy to cheer the progress in downtown and midtown as long as they're seeing the benefits in the neighborhood, and we're working really hard to make that happen. That's pretty incredible and something I think we should all applaud here. Congratulations. <laughs> Mayor Regalado, you've been serving your city over the last 20 years as a, a commissioner and now as mayor. And that's a lot of time for Miami. You've seen a lot of ups and downs in the city, uh, real estate going up, going down, coming back, maybe gone down again, coming back. Uh, tell us about the work that you've been doing in the city of Miami and how you're working across Miami-Dade County with some of your partners to really move the needle on this question of equitable development in distressed communities. Well, first of all, the city is doing uh, better than ever. Uh, just in this corridor, if you uh, look out the windows of your rooms, uh, you'll see new buildings that in the last four years, 80,000 new residents uh, have moved to downtown Miami. Property values are stable. Property values are, we have a sustainable economy. Uh, we came from uh, all 
almost to the brink of bankruptcy in 2009 with $30 million in the reserve. Now we have uh, $170 million uh, in the reserve and we have a triple A uh, rating from the bonds agency. So we have uh, a very good rich part of the city and then we have uh, deprived neighborhoods. What are we doing? Well, first of all, there cannot be economic development if the people doesn't feel safe, if the people are not safe, if the residents or the investors are not safe. So what is uh, the city of Miami has done uh, in the last uh, six years, especially in the last uh, four years? Uh, number one, we have increased uh, our police force uh, by 50% uh, compared to what we have about 20 years uh, ago. Number two, uh, we have gone to the neighborhoods uh, with uh, a lot of police visibility, but also with several programs that had been designed for the people of those neighborhoods uh, to regain Uh, police Athletic League, so the police is engaged. Actually, we engage a university and we're doing uh, several things with every police uh, officer. Number one, we, we're, we're teaching them diversity because we are a very diverse city. And number two, de-escalation. That's why we don't have uh, the shootings uh, that happens in other states. But also, there is a, there is a need to send a message. So we have gone to the deprived communities and we have sponged the records of uh, about 900 people. And uh, we have gone to the community and we have done gun buybacks. Uh, we, uh, we have rescued uh, from the communities uh, about 2,000 weapons, including about 700 assault uh, rifles. So in order to have economic <coughs> developing, you need to have not the people thinking that they are safe, but that they feel safe. Yeah. And if they do, uh, they would welcome the investment and the private sector. Yeah. Um, uh, congratulations <coughs> on what you've been doing in the city here as well. Um, uh, a final question for, for both of you. Um, Mayor Doug and I remember when we first started uh, working in your city and we talked about community development finance institutions, which is a, a um, treasury designation really for mission-driven nonprofit community lenders. And I think one of the best kept secrets in community development. In, um, in both of your cities now, we've made significant investments with CDFIs to build We've made significant investments in both of your cities to build the capacity of mission-driven community lenders to invest in a cross-sector of solutions, affordable housing, small business, grocery stores. Um, for Mayor Duggan, what advice can you give this room about how to work with, um, with CDFIs? And then, Mayor Regalado, I'd love to hear from you. We've made this investment in Liberty City and Opelok and what that will mean for those neighborhoods. Well, for, for Detroit, uh, CDFIs uh, transformed the city. Ten or 15 years ago, uh, these, they started to make loans into the Midtown area, which wasn't even known as Midtown, for uh, apartment buildings and retail. They were willing to take a level of risk the banks wouldn't touch. Uh, and at this point, Midtown has exploded and traditional lending is working. Now, these same CDFIs have come to us. We said, all right. Let's pick one area on the west side, one area on the east side, and one area on the southwest side where we're going to build in the apartments and the retail in the residential area and target those investments, and we're going to see if we can replicate it, see if the CDFIs come in first and in four or five years, the traditional lenders come in, and then we move uh, to another neighborhood. But if, if you aren't using them, I, I would encourage people to take a look if you're looking for uh, a little bit more of a high-risk loan to get a, a neighborhood going. So governments don't create jobs. Uh, private sector does. So what are we doing? Uh, what we're doing is also investing in infrastructure in Liberty City uh, because you guys have uh, come up with some money but the, the, the potential uh, receivers of those uh, grants should know that the government cares, that they are not being left behind. 
So we're investing several million dollars in infrastructure, new sidewalks, uh, trees, uh, uh, new streets, uh, so people can see that, yes, uh, it, it's a good deal to invest. Also, the schools. Uh, the schools, I mean, uh, Chase gave a grant to Nor uh, Norland High School, and uh, we took the White House challenge, uh, my brother's keepers. Uh, in the city of Miami, we are the biggest city in the state of Florida with uh, as, as, uh, public school. We have 53 public uh, schools. We have partnered with the uh, school board, and now we have this challenge that we took from the White House. 2,000 uh, high schoolers uh, have pledged, and we have gotten the possibility for them to go to college. These people would have dropped out uh, before ending high school. So uh, the, the only way to bring uh, economic prosperity is, number one, with the private sector. But the private sector needs to understand that the governments uh, really mean what they say. So we have to put the money where their mouth is. Great. Well, this issue of uh, inequality in our neighborhoods is not only not going away, um, I would posit it's a moral imperative, but it's an economic one. And you guys are showing how strategic investments in neighborhoods that have gone overlooked for some time are really part of the comeback story for your city. So I want to thank you for taking some time and joining us to share the story of your cities. Thank, thank you. you for your support.